evening. Earlier this week, former Fianna Fáil Minister Willie O'Dea wrote to the Education Minister Norma Foley expressing his concern at material on the Junior Cert and Leave and Cert English syllabus. And tonight I am joined by Wendy Drynan and Jackie O'Regan, who are going to chat to me now about the concerns that they have about this material. And um, Wendy, if I can begin with you, maybe you might um, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Good evening, Anna. Yes, my name is Wendy Drynan and I'm an English teacher and um, I also teach history and Spanish. Um, so I've been concerned about um, you know what, what I've seen happening in the English curriculum over the last while and in January 2020 I was teaching in a school and I had the opportunity at that point to um, review the prescribed list um, and pick some new material for my junior certs which I hadn't done for a while so you know I was looking through and then I started to research the material on the list and that's when I became very concerned um, with a lot of the newer more modern texts so we're going to talk about that tonight. Okay and Jackie um, can you tell our listeners a little bit about your background? Yeah, hi, thank you so much for this opportunity, Anna, just uh, to chat about this very serious issue. Um, I, my name is Jackie, as I said, and I am a mother of four. Um, I, they're from 22 all the way down to seven. So I <laughs> have every age going on in the house. And um, I suppose my background is uh, currently, for the last five years, I'm in and out of schools um, teaching internet safety. And obviously my kids are in the school system and I'm on the committee for the Irish Parents Review English curriculum. So that's why I'm involved in this process, just of parents who are concerned about what's going on with the curriculum. Okay, so if I can go back to you now, Wendy, um, you mentioned there that you were teaching English and uh, you began to review the material that was available for the Junior Cert English syllabus. So you can take up the story from there. OK, yes. So, um, yeah, and uh, I began to get concerned at some of the content on the list. Um, so, um, yeah, and I had to choose um, a film for my junior certs and out of the list that was given from the NCCA, the prescribed list, which is the list um, which teachers must choose their materials from, um, I felt there were only two films that I could possibly really choose for them due to the obscene content in the other movies. So anyway, the problem, Anna, just to explain really going back a few years, um, since 2014, um, when books like John Connolly's The Book of Lost Things and um, Darren and Shan Cirque du Freak began appearing for the first time. That's when the selection of prescribed lists um, started gradually widening every few years since then to include more and more dark themed books that deal with topics like demonic possession, murder, suicide and sexual violence in a violent, graphic, gratuitous way. And, you know, the scenes are very descriptive and detailed and they're written in what can only be described as gratuitous. And um, so, you know, a gratuitous way. So for any child who is not normally exposed to horror and violence and graphic sexual pornography, they are going to be potentially traumatized by this new material being introduced in the classroom under the guise of a relevant new curriculum. Um, the sexual scenes are very graphic in many of the newer texts and the message messages that students are getting from some of these texts is that it's normal and good um, if they as minors um, engage in as much promiscuous, uh, promiscuous sexual activity as possible. Um, like, for example, there are five texts I can think of um, in which minors are engaging in sexual encounters and activity with older adults. So, you know, we're talking about material that's been introduced to minors in the classroom. And just to clarify, we're not about censorship. I don't agree with censorship and neither is um, you know, Irish parents reviewing this curriculum, they're not about censorship either. We're talking about age appropriate material for minors in the classroom. So that's the problem that we're dealing with here. Um, so I can go on to mention some of these books if you want. Um, yes, please do. OK, uh, just to name some briefly, um, and then we'll go into a couple in more detail. Um, the book called The Loris by Sarah Taylor, which we're going to talk about in a bit, that has an oral sex scene spanning five to six pages. It's extremely descriptive and graphic. Um, then we have uh, Louis Sakar's The Boy Who Lost His Face, which was a previously banned book in America and um, Britain from, from school libraries. We've got teenage boys there looking at photos of girls as young as nine years of age and describing that they, they're getting a kick out of it and a few other th 
objectionable things in that book as well. Um, another book, if we have time, we're going to look at tonight, John Connolly's The Book of Lost Things. That is paedophilia and best, bestiality in that as well. Um, we have a, a very recent new edition that came on in January and on, on the latest prescribed list that the NCCA has issued. Um, it's Where the Crawdads Sing. It's a very popular book in female reading groups all around the globe at the moment. But um, it, it, it's, in my opinion, it's like um, a literary Mills and Boom book, you know, but it contains pretty explicitly described sexual scenes and some of which are between a 15 year old girl and an adult male. So, um, and uh, yeah, so I, I'll talk about the Lauras. I think it, you might have a graphic there of the Lauras, maybe a um, picture of the book there. I'm going to talk about that a bit more now. I need to apologise in advance to the listeners. This is very disgusting and I'm going to be saying offensive things here, but I'm going. it's important that parents know what your children are being exposed to in the classroom. So, and um, this book is actually being taught in schools at the moment. I know of a couple of schools that are using it. In fact, one school in Dublin, when the dad heard about this, he went into the school and he emailed the school and they took it off the curriculum straight away. And um, the principal had no idea that this that this was being taught by the English teacher in the school. OK, so the Lauras by Sarah Taylor. Um, it contains I'm going to read this from the blog site, irishparents.blogspot.com, which Jackie O'Regan is representing tonight. I took this review from there. Um, the Lauras by Sarah Taylor contains a barrage of offensive words and phrases. Crotch giblets in my pants, human fucking being, would you let me suck your dick, dick sucker and sucky, pissed off, asshole, shit, etc, etc, etc. There are five descriptive scenes of and references to masturbation. There are several scenes of physical violence, drug use and scenes set up in strip clubs and drag clubs where the minor in the story lets an adult, quote, dress me like a doll. Every chapter is infused with references to sexual acts or sexual thoughts and has no other obvious theme or redeeming merit for the classroom. And like I said, on pages 56 to 60, that's a, a lot of pages, there's a graphically described scene in which a minor is subjected to oral sex in a car by an older man and decides afterwards she rather enjoyed the experience. This scene is explicit, describes in detail the man's penis, which they call another rude term, and what he expects the girl to do with his penis, what she does to it with her mouth and tongue, what it felt and tasted like, etc., etc. So there are some, um, you know, on the blog site, there were parental reactions to that. And, you know, parents were just couldn't believe it. They were saying it's unbelievable that, that, that this has been selected, presumably by a teacher on the NCCA. Someone is pushing to sexualize our kids. Um, let's see what else they say here. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, they're very against it because that oral sex scene is not in any way saying that it's a bad thing. It's almost promoting it. It's seen as almost like the girl enjoyed it and it's interesting, a positive experience. So it is promotion of this. It's not it's not a way of teaching kids this is wrong or anything. Um, so well, I move on to another book here, The Handmaid's Tale. Um, Again, this is quite a shocking book as well, but this is an extremely popular choice that teachers are using in the classroom. And one of the reasons is it's quite a lazy reason. One of the reasons is because there are a lot of notes available on this because it's a very popular choice at third level. Um, and also the English curriculum has this on it and has had it on for a number of years. So the teachers like to buy, you know, use the notes. Anyway, Kate from Kerry, um, who did a review of this book, she says, this is a dystopian feminist tirade exploring and graphically describing sexual themes. Various scenes include rape described as fucking, while the wife of the commander rapist participates vicariously in the rape, sex and violence are constantly linked and the handmaiden, the sex slave in the story, often fantasizes in her head about murder and and suicide. At the end of the book, a mob of women are encouraged to viciously attack and kill a man, and scenes in include a club where the protagonist is dressed up as a prostitute and talks with another prostitute while she considers the possibility of signing up herself. The book portrays men as useless except for sex and, and creating babies, and the mother-daughter relationship is portrayed as very negative. And Kate says, I certainly do not want my daughter exposed to this kind of filth, and I don't see how this can possibly contribute to the mental health of the boys in our society either. Now, I'm going to read an excerpt from the book. This is very shocking. Prepare yourselves. I'm, I, I'm sorry to have to read this, but parents need to know. OK, quote, sometimes the movie she showed would be an old porno film from the 70s or 80s. Women kneeling, sucking penises or guns, 
women tied up or chained or with dog collars around their necks, women hanging from trees or upside down, naked with their legs held apart, women being raped, beaten up, killed. Once we had to watch a woman being slowly cut into pieces, her fingers and breasts snipped off with garden shears, her stomach slit open and her intestines pulled out. Phrases like getting laid, on all fours, spread your legs, the guards getting hard, looking at, at the, the girl and much, much more. So um, it's quite shocking material. Yes, yes. Uh, I, 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 I have to say that this is to me quite, quite shocking. And um, I am a former English teacher. I'm retired since 2018. And um, so I, you know, none of that material was um, on the syllabus when I was teaching. And I'm listening to this and I'm saying to myself, is this really happening? Is this really on the syllabus? Um, I think maybe if we bring in Jackie now, um, and thank you, Wendy, for that. Uh, Jackie, I think you have more material, have you, that you'd like yeah. to discuss? I do, yes, Anna. And, um, you know, I really want to say that um, we're not just picking little bits and pieces, you know, it's not like a couple of lines or a paragraph. Um, and what's fantastic about the review is that I know, listen, parents are busy. I know what it's like. I have four kids myself. Your, your child's book is on the list. You buy it. You may never know what's in it. This is fantastic because you can go on the irishparents.blogspot.com, see the, the book that your, your daughter or your son is studying, and you can actually go and read the reviews. So what I'm actually reading is reviews that are done by parents, and they're reading the books, and then they're saying, right, this is what's in the book. And really, just parents were getting more and more concerned and started adding to the blogspot. There's a new one out now. Um, it's called The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler. Um, and again, this has only just, just recently been added on. And it is, again, just I'm going to read directly from the blogspot.com. This is somebody who actually read the book and reviewed. Um, and you can see um, that it is a disturbing murder detective story. It contains various sexual scenes uh, in which the female who's called a femme fatale slut is naked. So again, there's chapters seven, nine and 24. So this is spread throughout the book. She's drugged, she's being slapped. I slapped her around a little more. She didn't mind the slaps. And um, she's photographed while posing for a pornographic photo shoot in front of a pole containing a hidden camera by a bisexual man, Grieger, who organizes sex orgies and blackmails rich customers. He is also a buyer and seller of pornographic books. Um, he runs an illicit porn lending library, a lending library of elaborate smut. And it just goes on and on. It is laden with sexual innuendo and sexually suggestive conversations between the character Vivian and Marlowe. And it, it has been heavily censored by publishers in the past. Um, and this is, again, uh, some parents that reviewed this or just said it is not a suitable choice for teenagers to study in the English classroom. And honestly, it, it's it's a lot like this is not SPHE where, you know, you know, you're going to study a, a particular subject or, you know, they're going to deal with with some issue, life issue to talk. This is an English class. This is literature. This They, they don't have a choice. You're, you're sitting there with your peers and it, it can be quite uncomfortable, I'm sure, for a lot of kids listening to this. So, again, that, that's another book that's just come on on stream. OK, and I, there are um, a couple of films as well that you want to speak about. Um, which of you would like to um, review the films? Yeah, I, I can come on there, Anna. There's the um, Winter's Bone and uh, that's for the Leaving Cert. It's prescribed there and it's by Deborah Granix and it's R-rated. Um, and it's it's just again, it's a, it's a bleak, menacing backdrop and the 17 year old female uh, Ree visits various people in turn who are either drug addicts, offering drugs to a minor, snorting cocaine, they're gory scenes. Again, there's the violence in this animal skinning um, in one scene. Young Reese has a glass thrown at her face and is dragged by the hair and slapped 
by another woman. And there were scenes of vandalism. And again, they use a chainsaw to hack off a dead man's hands. And I know from going in and out of schools, I, I have to be extremely careful about what I say. There's words I can't use. And, you know, and I, only rightly so. Um, you know, you're, you're dealing with, uh, when you're talking about the internet, there's, there's lots of things that are really difficult. But, you know, we, we've got to be um, inclusive of all the children in the class and, and the young people as to where they're at. And the verdict, again, on the Irish parents uh, review curriculum said that it's not suitable for viewing in the classroom due to the violence and disturbing scenes involving animal skinning and desecration of a corpse. So that's one of the ones on the leaving search. OK, and um, so if I can go back now to you, Jackie, have you anything to add to what, um, to what, um, oh, sorry, if I can yeah. get back to you, Wendy, I apologise. Um, do you have anything to add to what Jackie has just said? Yeah, um, uh, there's a yeah, there are a couple of other movies I just mentioned very brief or, or novels actually. Um, there's a there's a book called Room by Emma Donoghue, and um, it, it's just similar in that um, there's you know the, the whole premise of that book is that a girl a w young woman is kidnapped and kept for seven years as a sex slave basically and raped systematically. Even though it's not described gratuitously, those scenes it's still occurring in the book the whole way through the book, and the young child who's born out of that is sitting in the wardrobe watching it all through the wardrobe chink in the door you know but um basically we're giving messages here to the kids and you know the students in the classroom like what are boys going to think when they you know re re you know, studying a book like that that it's okay to kidnap your next door neighbor and you know get free sex for seven years like you know and you know that it's okay in the movie that Jackie just mentioned Winter's Bone that you know you can just go and get grab a chainsaw and cut up a dead body like you know um you know we're I, giving I, bad I, messages I, I, I would have to disagree with you there in the sense that the message that the students are picking up may be that it is, it, it certainly wouldn't be that it's okay to do this. But my concern would be that um, being exposed to that type of gratuitous um, violence and so on would affect their mental health. That would be my big concern. Absolutely, Anna. Yeah. Now, I, I have conducted a, a comprehensive report on the curriculum, both the junior and the senior curriculum, and I, I, I spent nine months writing an analytic report. I sent it to the Minister for Education, Norma Foley, on April 19th, and also 29 other TDs. So, um, and in that report, I, I do include a psychologist report and a psychotherapist report, and also um, some other, you know, reports that are relating to young people's mental health. And yeah, I might quote a couple of things there um, the psychologist said that at this stage in their lives uh, you know young people lack the critical skills to differentiate between valid information and that which can be harmful and manipulative so that's quite an interesting perspective you know and that they're also like sponges and that they often attempt to act out what they're seeing you know because out of maybe uh, lack of self-esteem or just wanting to prove themselves but if they're seeing and hearing things in the classroom as well she made the point that they are going to um you know they can justify it they can say well it's part of the school curriculum the teachers are teaching this so it must be something to emulate something to act out so, okay good so um, to our, our time unfortunately um ha has run out um and I suppose the one thing that we have done tonight is to uh, raise awareness. I, I'm sure there are um, viewers watching in who have children in secondary school and they weren't aware that this was happening. So that um, at least now, the, the, you know, you, you are creating awareness uh, and alerting parents to what, it, to what is actually happening. So... Wendy, if I could just go back to you now for a final word, what would you like to see happening? OK, well, obviously, we want to see these books and movies removed. Like over 52 percent of the senior novels have this sexual gratuitous stuff in them. Um, and all the stats are there. If you want to look at the report, you can go to the, the blog site. Anyway, parents go to the blog site, irishparents.blogspot.com. And in the introduction section there, if you if you go to it, and you press the read more. 
um, click on read more, you can get the entire introduction and it will explain exactly what um, steps parents can take to be proactive in, in you know, helping to remove these offensive texts and uh, films from the curriculum. And um, there are various people that you can contact via email or write a letter and there's even a sample letter up there as well. So Norma Foley, obviously the Minister of Education. There's Arlene Forster, who is the present um, CEO of the NCCA, um, where these the, the, the prescribed lists are emanating from the NCCA. Um, also, um, there's, a, there's a number of people they can contact anyway, all the details and how to contact them. It's all there in the introduction to the blog site, irishparents.blogspot.com. And again, like Jackie explained, all the reviews of each individual play and novel and film are up there on that blog site. It's a, it's a really good resource for teachers and parents. Um, and you need to contact the school principals as well. Important to contact them as well. Okay, thank you, Wendy. And now Thanks. if I could go over to you, Jackie, for a final word. I really appreciate the opportunity, um, Anna, to, to highlight this issue and really pleading with parents to, to get involved. It's still um, in our Irish constitution that the parents are the primary educators and, you know, we need to get proactive about this and get involved and know what our children are learning and decide whether we are feel it's appropriate or not. And there's a very comprehensive, as Wendy said, review on all of the, the books, more or less, that are there. And again, it's also important that we suggest alternatives, that we're not just saying, you know, here's a problem, but there are actually even some good alternatives um, because we do want, um, you know, peer learning is, is a really fantastic way to learn and to raise issues that are not always so dark themed. Uh, teenagers are, are, you spoke about mental health, they're going through so much. And even this year that we've been in, if we could just have some positive themes, good role models, you know, uh, good good quality literature and just bring back again just what what it's all about and uh, just really implore parents to get involved and to just write to everyone their local TD and the principals of the schools already some principals have responded and taken down some of the books so I think this is fantastic and we really appreciate the opportunity to to just highlight this this evening thank you so much okay well Wendy and uh, Jackie, I want to thank both of you be because I know that you have done an immeasurable amount of research to bring all of this together. Um, and I know, Wendy, that you have um, spent nine months um, reading all of this material and writing up a review which you have circulated. And you have your, uh, you know, a really, really good website there. And um, we'll put the link to that website in the description box um, that accompanies this video so that uh, uh, viewers can access it easily. So I want to thank both of you this evening. Thank you, Anna. Thank you.